Welcome to another episode of Seven Minutes Medicine. Today we're going to talk about approach to hepatic encephalopathy. So the definition of hepatic encephalopathy is a cognitive neuromuscular dysfunction might be associated with insomnia, depression, slow reaction time, even focal neurologic deficit, and eventually maybe coma and can be classified depend on the etiology to type A related to acute liver failure, type B related to the portosystemic bypass, and type C, which is the most common related to cirrhosis with portal hypertension. There is a grading system for hepatic encephalopathy. So grade one is mild confusion, possibly large speech, and the grade four is coma and responsive to pain and the patient should be intubated. So grade two, there is more confusion and lethargy and asterisks are positive in grade two. And in grade three, the patient can be confused, incoherent speech, and there is sleepy, but still you can arouse them. So to diagnose hepatic encephalopathy, there is a bedside uh, test you can perform. The first number connection test, right and test, and the normal is age and seconds. So probably you just hand the patient a piece of paper with numbers. You can print a form from online and the patient will try to connect the numbers in order. Second, Stroop app, and this is an app, it's a free, you can use it on your phone to help identify patients with hepatic encephalopathy. For investigation, if you do EEG, it's going to show decrease in frequency and increase in amplitude. You do CT and MRI to rule out cerebral edema. And you have to rule out other causes of confusion like hypoglycemia, uremia, erectile disturbances, and intoxication. Ammonia level should only be ordered when you suspect that the patient has liver disease or portosystemic shunt plus altered mental status you don't order ammonia at baseline. One of the most important things uh, in hepatic encephalopathy is to identify precipitants and treat them. Precipitants include GI bleeding, infection like uh, SPP, spontaneous bacterial peritonitis, UTI, hypokalemia or metabolic alkalosis in general, with renal failure, hypoglycemia, hypovolemia, constipation, sedatives, and hypoxia. It's very important to identify these precipitants and treat them as a to help with hepatic encephalopathy. So the first line of a treatment first to correct the precipitating factor. For example, if the patient has infection to treat the infection. Second line is to lower blood ammonia level and here's important thing if the ammonia level is elevated without symptoms like for example we checked ammonia in patient with liver cirrhosis but there is no encephalopathy there is no indication for treatment also it's very important to replace low potassium because hypokalemia increase renal ammonia production which might worsen hepatic encephalopathy So to lower ammonia level, we can use first lactulose, 20 to 30 gram, two to four times a day. And you have to titrate it to three to four bowel movements per day. And this is how you dose lactulose, by the number of bowel movements. Second, you can use lactitol, 67 to 100 grams diluted in 100 ml water in divided doses throughout the day. If the patient cannot take oral, you might need to use enema, and some patients in the ICU uh, may get a nasogastric tube, so you can use the nasogastric tube. If there is no improvement in the symptoms after 48 hours, you can start using rifaximin 400 three times a day or, four, or 550 two times a day. Other treatment measures, uh, you can uh, use antibiotics 
other than rifaximin because rifaximin is antibiotic like vancomycin or metronidazole. You can use branched chain amino acids, uh, prebiotics. There's also other experimental therapies like uh, acarbose, polyethylene glycol, uh, sodium benzoate, and zinc. Um, and there is some literature that uh, naltrexone may help with uh, hepatic encephalopathy. But all of these are second line, and there is no consensus on using them. So take home message. First, always look for hepatic encephalopathy because it can be very subtle, especially in the very beginning, grade one. And you have to familiarize yourself with the bedside assessment tools. Second, you have to order ammonia if you suspect liver disease or portosystemic shunt or bypass and alter mental status. Uh, third, you use the bowel movement uh, number per day to assess the response to your therapy and you have to correct reversible causes especially hypokalemia thank you for watching uh, the video if you like the content please subscribe to our channel for more interesting videos